Welcome back. I got a request from someone on how to design a simple yard, say something with maybe just five tracks. And how do you come up with the filler pieces between the turnouts for various spacings of the track? So I thought we'd do that in this video. Now I'd like to point out that this is video 24 and as of right now in May of 2021, there is no video 23. Video 23 is still a work in progress. So those of you who have been following me from the very beginning, when we started this about six months ago, you'll note that there is no video 23. People who come in several years from now and look at this are going to say, what are you talking about? There's a video 23. But like I said, as of right now in May of 2021, there is no video 23. So I'm going to start this video with another one of my kind of boring technical explanations, but I just want to show you something about uh, any rail and kind of some of the weird things that it does. And I've mentioned there are other weird things about um, any rail, but I just want to kind of point this one out so that when you're working and you start to get these kind of funny readings, you'll understand what's going on. So let me show you a couple examples here. Now, I hope I can show this uh, somewhat clearly. Now, here is a simple ladder that I made using number six and number four turnouts. And what I did here is I just connected the turnouts together like this. Now, for this drawing, the measurements were made in one sixteenth of an inch in the settings. You go up here and my setting precision was set to one sixteenth of an inch. One of the things I've been fighting with when I've been designing in any rail is I'm using the Walther's Code 83 track. And up until about a week ago, I didn't have any of that track. It was really unobtainium. But uh, I finally was able to get a shipment of the track and the turnouts in. So I was actually able to put those turnouts onto a piece of paper that I had drawn lines on and actually get some measurements and see how it compares with any rail. And it's pretty darn close. So here's what I got. So if I put number six switches together like this, I get a spacing in any rail of one and seven eighths or 1.875 inches on the track centers. Now, if I measure that in the real world, I get one and 25 30 seconds or 1.78 inches. So they're pretty close. Same thing down here with the number fours. You'll see that uh, if you put them together, you get two and three eighths inches or 2.375 inches on the track centers. And in the actual real world, it comes up to two and five sixteenths or 2.31. So that works out pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. But what it means is if you're working in any rail, there's going to be some error creeping in. But I mean, in this instance here, we're talking 64 one thousandths of an inch. So we're, we're not talking much, but it's just something I want you to be aware of. Now, I like to work one sixteenth of an inch when I'm doing my track design. And I don't know what you metric people like to work in, but, uh, you know, uh, for me, it's one sixteenth of an inch. And when you're putting your track down and everything, I mean, how accurate are you really going to be? I just want to show you one more thing. If you're working in 1 32nd of an inch for your precision, it's going to change just a tiny bit. So let me show you that. So here we are in 1 32nd of an inch, and there is something interesting here that I just need to point out. Now, this track is right on this grid line, 108, 36 arts, X, Y coordinates. Come down here and you get 108 and 37 and 29 30 seconds for your Y. Now, you put this other switch on there, exact same switch, and you would expect this track to fall at 108, 39, and 26 30 seconds. But it actually comes up at 25 30 seconds. And it does the same thing down here. So, you can see as you add on here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, it goes off a little bit. But what are we talking? We're talking 1 16th of an inch again. So it's not that bad. But I just want to point that out. That seems like any rail, when you do some things like this, it doesn't always calculate the same. And when we get into actually putting these tracks on specific centers, I have found that, you know, you'll come up with a filler piece to put in between your two turnouts. And sometimes 
I'll put the same filler piece in, but I'll get a different measurement over here. It just, it, it doesn't quite work out. But the error is so small that I don't think it's going to affect you. But I just wanted to point out that I have discovered this. So when you're doing your drawing and you're going through and you're looking at your endpoints or whatever, and you're going, well, why is it doing that? Um, I can't tell you why it's doing that, but it does it. So it's, I think it's a known error. Okay, let's start looking at some real world examples. All right, so here's the examples we're going to be working with. We're going to work with the track on two inch centers, two and a quarter inch centers, and two and a half inch centers. Now, everybody has their own idea on how far apart their tracks and their yard should be. So I'm just going to show you on these examples at two, two and a quarter, two and a half. Now, number four switches get a little weird. So that's why we're going to start with the number six switches. Now, once again, I want to point out that I am working with the Walther's Code 83 track. So your mileage is going to vary if you're working with other manufacturers track. Now, in fact, I tried several other types of track when I was setting up these demonstrations. I think I used the Atlas and I used the Pico. But if I showed you all of those, you know, the video would just be horribly long. And I can't go through and give you an example for every track manufacturer on the planet Earth. But what I'm going to show you here, you can adapt to whatever track you're going to be using. So let's start with the two inch centers. And it's pretty much uh, what I'm gonna show you on two inch centers will work for everything else. Well, obviously that's why I'm doing the video. So let's uh, turn off these guys here. And we'll just concentrate on this guy up here. Now, what we're going to end up with is something that looks like this. Now, how did I get to this point? Well, it's kind of complicated and it's the only way that I've been able to figure out how to do it. But if you know another way, please let me know and I will incorporate it into the video. So let's uh, get rid of these guys and we're just going to go up here and we're going to work on this. So we're talking two inch centers. Now, the way I've discovered to do this is I come up here, I select this piece of track and I say add parallel flex. And I want it to be on a two inch center. So we'll put in two and we'll hit below. There's our other track. And before we go any farther, let's go to settings and make sure we're on 1 16th. Yes, we are. Okay. So let's get back to this. Now we're going to add in a number six left hand because we wanted to the track to sweep out this way. So let's go grab that number six. I'm going to pull this piece of track back like that. I'm going to bring this guy up. I'm going to connect him. Now here's where the fun starts. Oh boy. So we're going to go grab another piece of track here and we're going to connect it up to this guy. But in my example here, I have a slight problem because I have hidden track here. I have a connection point here, so I have to remove this connection point. Make that go away. Otherwise, this piece of track will not connect. So if you ever have a piece of hidden track like that, I think I've explained that in another video. If you have a connection point there, let's just put that guy back in. And you try and connect another piece of track, it's not going to connect. So I have to come up here. I have to remove that now. I can put that on there. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to move this over and align it here, but it's going to be easier if we are looking at center line like this. And another way that we're going to make it easier on ourselves is we're going to create a section and we're going to make it a different color like that. Now this sounds like it's going to be very complicated, but the thing is, but once you figure out this little filler piece that you are going to put in here to get your proper spacing, you can just save that as an entity and just keep pulling that in whenever you need it. You don't have to go through all of this. This is just the setup to get that filler piece. So let's just select this guy. Let's select this guy. I'm just going to move him over with the left arrow key and get him sort of in place like this. You'll notice how close it's getting there. Now, 
I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to look at this. Now I'm going to hold down my shift key. So I'm moving in 1 64th of an inch. With the shift key down, I can move in finer increments. That's with the shift key down. That's with the shift key released. So let's hold that shift key down and we're going to look at what we're doing here. Now I can line it up by looking at the center of my track or I can line it up by looking at the overlap. Now this is green because it's highlighted and I have this blue. So let's zoom in here. And now let's move it a little bit. I'm looking at that green. And there we go. Here you go. You, here you see I've got more green on this side, less green on this side. If I come over a little bit, now I've got more green down here, less green up here. So I'm going to go for the center of that, where it looks like it's equal on both. And that looks to be about as good as we are going to get it. Okay, now we're going to zoom out. Now you'll notice this is very, very tiny over here. It's just a little tiny filler piece. And as I've pointed out in other videos, if I try to bring the endpoint, let's zoom out. If I try to bring this endpoint all the way back to here to connect to the end of my switch, it folds in on itself and it, it just gets all squirrely. So we're not going to do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to zoom back in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create an additional layer. And I'm going to call this You'll notice I have them A, B, C, D instead of numbers. Uh, I'm just going to call this layer B, B like that. And then I'm going to take this guy and this guy, because I know they're lined up here. And I'm going to put them on B, B. And I'm going to turn off that layer. Now, I'm going to cut this guy. Now, I know it's going to be a little tiny piece, so I'm just going to cut him like right here. Let's see if that works. Then I'm going to delete that. I'm going to turn BB back on. I'm going to grab that end. I'm going to fold it back. I see it turning red. Like so. Now when you're working with two inch centers, you end up with a tiny little piece over here. I keep saying tiny little piece, but it is a tiny little piece. So I'm going to disconnect you. I'm going to slide that one away. Now I'm going to try and go in here. I'm going to zoom in as much as I can, and I'm going to try and grab that piece of track. Okay, so now I'm going to try and select this small piece of track. So I'm going to move my mouse down now. You notice that gray line in the middle? You notice how it appears? Okay, now I'm going to left click and now I've selected it. Now what I want to do is I want to make this a straight piece of track. Now it's almost impossible to come down and select this and right click to get the, the uh, straight flex function. But fortunately for us, straight flex appears up here. So I'm just going to hit straight flex and it says five eighths of an inch. I'm going to say, okay. So now I know this piece of track is straight and it's five eighths of an inch. Now I'm going to zoom out again. I'm going to bring this guy back and I'm going to attach him to that. And now hopefully, if we got this right, this is going to end up two inches down in our Y. So this is our Y here is 36. This should be 38. And sure enough, it is. All right, let's zoom out a little bit, make sure we didn't curve anything. So we'll come over here, we'll look at this end, and we're still at 38 on our Y. So now, let's kill off this as a section. And we'll remove this guy here. We don't need him. So let's copy this guy and see what happens. I'm going to do a control C and a control V. 
And you'll notice I have my little section down there. I'm going to move him up. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to drag it over, put it on there. Let's see what happens. Grab the end point here. We should be at 40. And we're at 40. So now I can add two more of these. Let's see if we can grab him. It gets difficult when you're working with a small piece of track like this. It gets really, really difficult. I tried not to say tiny piece of track that time. It's a little tedious, but once you get the template made, you can um, kind of just zip along. So let's do that. Make it a little easier on ourselves. Let's pull this guy up, get him closer this time, which is what I should have done in the first place. A clever person would have done that. So if I can find a clever person, we'll have them do that. All right. Now, 36, 38, 40, 41, 15, 16 and 43 and 15 sixteenths. So we're off by a whole sixteenth of an inch. Why is that, you ask? Well, remember how I told you that sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you think it's going to work out? That's exactly what happened here. So what do you do? This is exactly what I did when I was setting up these examples. You come back in here and you have to keep screwing with this little piece right here. And you just keep messing with it until you get it right. So what I would do in this instance is I would disconnect, disconnect. I'd pull that away. I'd come in. And I'd grab this guy, drag him down, and I'd go to straight flex. And I'd go, hmm, okay, well, it was off by a sixteenth of an inch. You know, you may not care about a sixteenth of an inch, but uh, I'll try a different length of that track. So we know we were short by a sixteenth of an inch, so I'll kick it up a little bit. So I got five ace now, which is ten sixteenths. So let's try 11 sixteenths, like that, and we'll copy it, and we'll paste one here, and we'll paste one there. Now we'll go grab this guy, put him back up here, we'll grab our track here. I know, doesn't this sound complicated? It's the fun of CAD. It's why you have so much fun when you do CAD. So let's go grab this guy now, and we're going to drag him here. I'm just going to go up and I'm going to grab another switch. Drop the switch in. Grab a piece of flex. I'm going to do this here again. I'm going to put this guy here. Let's paste in another one. Grab another switch. Grab that, and we should be able to see if we're going off here, if we're getting close. Let's do one more, just so I can bore you a little bit more. Grab that guy. We're going to drop him in. I'm going to add this. Now let's look at our endpoints. What do we got? 36, 38, 40. 42, 44, and we can probably just keep going here. 
let's just add that on there. Just for the heck of it. Let's see how good we're doing here. We're on two inch centers. So if I zoom out now, I now have my number six ladder on two inch centers and I know it's accurate. And I also know that for a filler piece, let's put them down, let's put him down here. We know that we want this guy to be 11 sixteenths of an inch. And that's the size filler that we need to put between our turnouts to put us on two inch centers. So now you can just come over here. You can grab another switch. You can connect it. And save this as an entity on another drawing. And whenever you need two inch centers with a number six switch, you've got it made up. Okay, let's lose that. And then I am going to pull back here and I am going to lose all of that. And I'm going to turn that back on. And as you'll see here, 11 16 filler for proper spacing. And there you go. Okay, now, say you want to do two and a quarter inch centers. Well, I'm not going to go through the whole design process again. I did the exact same thing. The way I got this is the way I got this and the two and a half. But let me show you this. Let's pop those in there. For that, for two and a quarter inch centers, I need a two and a quarter inch filler piece. Now, and don't go, oh, hey, look at that. It's two and a quarter, two and a quarter. No, it doesn't work out that way. I wish it did, but it doesn't. But anyway, you come over here and you check your endpoints. And sure enough, you can see everything is on two and a quarter inches. So we know a two and a quarter inch filler piece will work perfectly. And how do you get that quickly? Let's just review. If you needed it, say you had this written down and you go, oh, I need a two and a quarter inch piece. Just come up here. Take a piece of flex, cut the flex, disconnect it, go to straight flex, type in, there's your filler piece. Same thing with two and a half. You want to put it on two and a half inch centers? Now you need a 3.75 inch filler space to get the proper spacing. Maybe there's some kind of complex mathematical formula that lets you figure this out. But uh, as I've explained in other videos, I hate complex math. So I'm not even going to attempt to do that. But anyway, you would know that 3.75 inch gives you the proper spacing. And you can either write that down or you can make a pre-built entity out of it and, and you're good. So yeah, the initial setup is kind of complicated because you have to go in there and you have to, you know, move this track over. You have to get your proper spacing. You have to put the switch in. Then you have to put in a straight piece here, move it back, line it up, figure out how to cut it, then make sure the piece is straight. You don't want any curve in it. Put them together, put several together, and then come over to your endpoints and make sure that they're lining up properly. And if they don't, then you have to erase it. You have to go back. You have to start again. You add a little bit. Sometimes, even when you're working with 1 16th of an inch precision, you may have to use 30 seconds of an inch for your filler piece to move it properly. But the nice thing is, like I've mentioned before multiple times, is that once you get that number you're done. That's it. You can use it over and over and over again in your drawings. All right. Now let's take a look at number four. I'm only going to do number four and number six switches because, uh, like I said before, it just gets too crazy. But like I said before, I'm showing you the basics so that you can work with any brand of track and any track spacing that you want. So let's go take a look at number fours. So here we are with number four turnouts. Now, number four turnouts in the Walther's track seem to be a special case. And I've confirmed 
what I have here on the drawing by taking my piece of paper, drawing lines on it that are two inches apart, and then placing the number four switches on top of those and looking at it. So let's start with just putting them on two inch centers. So let's do this. Let's uh, kill everybody off here. And let's look at two inch centers. Now, for the Walders Code 83, it's kind of a special case here. Let me zoom in. I can't get two inch centers without overlapping the switches. So I have to overlap the switch. And I don't know what this measurement is because when you put a ruler onto any rail, it gets kind of screwy when you try to make it too small. It tries to cram the numbers in between the two arrows. It would be nice if it had some kind of way to tell it to, okay, when the ruler gets too small, put the numbers out to either the left or the right side, but it doesn't do that. But let's zoom in here. And what are we looking at? We're looking at what? quarter of an inch for every square, I think it is. So we're looking at maybe one, two, three. Maybe we're overlapping by three quarters of an inch. Now I overlap the actual switches and sure enough, yeah, you can do it. You can cut off from the straight root of the turnout and push the point side of the switch over and it does work. So if you really wanted two inch spacing, you'd have to do some cutting. But when you get down here and you try and put this curve in for the final track, it does that screwy thing again where it kind of puts in a little bit of an S curve. And you'll notice that I'm below my minimum radius. In fact, I'm down to 16 and 1 8 inches. So it doesn't really work down here, which is a kind of a shame. Now, if you know a way to make it work, let me know. But I mean, I've tried cutting farther back, farther, 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 and the track just does that swoopy doopy curve like that, which just doesn't look good. So you can put them on two inch track centers, but it doesn't look all that nice. Now let's try this. So in this example, this is probably what I would do if I was going to build this yard out of the, the switches. Um, there, there might be another way you could do this, but uh, I didn't really want to work it out. If you just take the switches and you put them end to end like that and just connect them, you end up with a two and three eighth inch center, which, you know, you could use two and a quarter as your... Uh, as your standard, but if you're using number fours, two and three eighths, I don't think anybody is going to notice that. So that makes it kind of easy. I mean, you just put them together and there you go. And then down here, you can get a nice curve out of that depending on where you cut your flex. If I move this out a little bit more, I'd get something a little wider than 23 and 7 sixteenths. Let's go to two and a half inch. Now, for two and a half inch, you have to put in a filler piece. And we come up with that filler piece the same way that we came up with the filler for the number six. And in this instance, in order to get the track on two and a half inch centers, I need a five eighth inch long filler piece. So as you can see, number four switches are kind of a special case when I'm using the uh, Walders. And as I've said, if you're using other track brands, uh, you know, you're going to come up with different size filler pieces. Now, maybe some of the track is already preset so that you just put it together and you get a, a specific spacing and, uh, you know, you're, you're fine with that. But at least now you sort of know how to do a custom spacing if you want to. Okay, and one thing I forgot to uh, do here, and I'm gonna, just going to throw it in, is say you want this to be a double-ended yard. Um, it's real simple. You can do this on all the examples I have here. We'll just do it this way. We're just going to come over and we're going to select everything. We're going to do a control C. 
Then we're going to come over here and we're going to do a control V. Now I'm going to flip that. Okay. Now I'm going to grab that one piece of track and I'm going to drag it over. And I get my blue connection dot there. Release it. There it is. They're all connected. And now you have a nice double-ended yard. So I think we'll end it there. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll try and get to them. Uh, now, also, if you would like a chart like I've done with some of the other stuff that shows, you know, what the spacing is and how I did that, I can make up a PDF and put it up on the website. So let me know if you would like something like that. So I think in our next video, we're going to try something a little more complicated than that. It'll be a learning experience for both of us. It'll be something I haven't tried before. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a yard out of the John Armstrong track planning for realistic operation. And we're going to use that as a template. And we're going to try and make up something. And we'll see how that goes. So hopefully I don't end up tearing out uh, what little hair I have left on top of my head when we try to do this. So, oh yeah, if you feel the sudden need to break out your calculator and try that equation I put up on the screen to try and calculate your track filler pieces, don't be surprised if you end up with the design for a 12-tower AM directional array instead of a track filler piece. We'll see you next time.